Good morning. I want to welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to our worship service this morning. Those of you that are here in the sanctuary and those of you that are with us via live stream are in for a treat today. My name is Deborah Pritz. I'm one of the members of the congregation who's going to be helping lead the service this morning. Um, Pastor Robert and Heather are enjoying a well-deserved vacation and they will be back with us next week. But in the meantime, it's just us. Yay! <laughs> um, I want to remind you that if you are watching via live stream and are a visitor to our congregation, I invite you to go to spokala.org and fill out a visitor's card so that we can get to know you a little bit better. And all of you, if you're moved this morning to make an offering to the work of Christ through this church today, there are a variety of ways that you can do that. You can either leave your offering in the plates at the back of the sanctuary this morning when you leave. You can mail your offering to the church office during the week. Or you can go to supportstpauls.org and follow the prompts online. And I've been told that it's a seamless and relatively painless process, right? Yes, I'm getting the thumbs up, okay. <laughs> so music director Joe Crowder is going to lead us in this morning's opening song and it's meant to get our spirits uh, awake and our bodies moving. So please rise, if the spirit moves you, we're singing number 374, Standing on the Promises.
Now this morning we have a very different format for our service than you might be used to because we have the opportunity to hear some incredible testimonies today. This morning our focus is going to be on receiving and acting upon God's vision for us both as individuals and as a congregation. Now Proverbs 29 warns us that where there is no vision, the people, do you know that verse? The people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But scripture also assures us that God is sending his vision forth to us on a constant basis. As Joel 2 tells us, and it shall come to pass, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And that scripture we know was fulfilled and renewed on the day of Pentecost, when God sent the Holy Spirit from heaven to rest upon the church in a special way. So first, we're going to hear today from those who participated in this year's mission trip, a vision fulfilled, if you will. And then we will hear from those who attended annual conference this year on our behalf, where they received a new vision to guide and reinvigorate us as the people of God in this particular place and at this particular time. So we have a lot of wonderful things to share in together this morning. Let us pray together and thank God for this opportunity and also lift up to him our needs and concerns. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of wind, God of word and of fire, we bless your name this day for sending the light and strength of the Holy Spirit to your church. We give you thanks for the gifts, great and small, you have poured out upon us, your children. We thank you for those who have blessed our world by responding to your call, by sharing in your vision, and by acting according to your will. And we pray, Lord, that you would encourage all of us to do this, to seek your ways and to strive to live each day according to your direction. And we pray that you would revive our church, not just this church, but the church, the church of Jesus Christ, helping us to spread the good news of salvation to all. As we come together in this comfortable, beautiful place, we remember in our hearts in a special way this morning those who have particular needs and burdens. We remember those who have died and all those who mourn especially those impacted by the collapse in Surfside, Florida. We pray for those afflicted in mind, body, or spirit, and pray for their healing. We pray for caregivers and health care workers, asking, Lord, that you would give them strength for their tasks. We pray for those around the world living in the midst of violence, in the midst of poverty, in the midst of oppression, and we pray that they might be blessed with peace instead of violence, with plenty instead of poverty, and with justice in the face of oppression. And we pray, Lord, in addition, that you would continue to reveal to us how we can participate in making those things happen, in bringing that new day that you have promised to pass. When we are discouraged, encourage us, Lord. When we are weary, let us find our rest in you. When we are afraid, calm our fears. When we are confused, guide our steps. When we find ourselves wandering from you, hold on to us, Lord, and bring us back home. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I'd like to invite the younger children for our time together this morning. Come on over here with me for just a few minutes. And actually, if you want to sit right down there on that pew, then when we see the slide presentation by the other kids, you'll be able to see it right in front of you. How are you doing this morning? Good. It's good to see you. I wanted to talk to you just a little bit this morning about what the um, people in the next part of the service are going to be showing us. They went on a special kind of trip a few weeks ago. Do you remember what kind of trip it was? What was it, Ellie Jo? A mission, a mission trip. Now that word mission, do you know what word the word mission means? Well, I wanted to make sure that I gave you the correct answer, so I looked it up in the dictionary. And actually, a mission is something important that someone asks you to do. Okay? So a mission is something important that someone asks you to do. Who do you think asked these people in the blue shirts, teal shirts, excuse me, Teal shirts. I should know. I saw that order form many times. <laughs> Who
Who do you think told these people to go on their mission? Pastor Robert. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I do believe that Pastor Robert gave them the okay to go, but who do you think put the idea of inside their heads and inside their hearts? I'll tell you, yeah, I sort of think it was, it was God. I think God gave them the vision, and then they said yes to God's vision and went forth to do what he asked them to do, and that made it a mission. So as you watch their presentation this morning, you pay close attention because in just a few years, look, in just a few years, you might be able to go on a mission trip. Would that be exciting? Yeah, I think so. I think so. But let me ask you this. Do you need to go away from home in order to do a mission for God? You think so? Well, yeah, but you know what I was thinking of? I was thinking that in a few weeks, um, we're all going to be contributing food and stuff. Uh, all of the people who are involved in the children's ministries, we're going to be collecting food, and then we're going down to Interfaith here in Ocala, and we're going to be serving dinner to the people at Interfaith in a couple of weeks. So that sounds like a mission to me, right? But we don't have to go away from home to do it. So, I think that it's probably safer to say that a mission is something that God gives us the desire to do for him, and it's very, very important. And sometimes we get to go away from home, and it's kind of neat because we get to go on a trip, even though it's hard work too, I know. But sometimes we can fulfill that call to God's miss mission uh, right in our own city, and you know, sometimes even right in our own homes. Isn't that amazing? So let's say a prayer to God and thank him for this responsibility he's given us. Gracious God, we thank you so much that according to the scriptures, you keep on pouring out visions to us. You keep on pouring out requests to us. You keep on setting before us a picture of the way you want the world to be and the way you want people to be and the way you want us to take care of one another. And we thank you, Lord, that you trust us enough with these visions that you are willing to put them out there so that we can respond and go forth for you. And we pray, Lord, that you would bless these children today. We pray that you would bless them, that they might hear your call to mission and respond. And Lord, <laughs> what we ask for them, we ask for all of us as your church this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> would you like this? Use my big boy voice. <laughs> Mission Trip 2021 was an amazing experience. The youth and the four, the 12 youth and the four adults that went along went into unknown territory. We slept on the floors of a church. We had to move rooms several times because that church was also impacted by the hurricane and had to have its own recovery effort going on. Moving rooms was a whole different experience, wasn't it? We all lost something in that move somewhere. Uh, I lost a pillow somewhere, my wife reminds me. Um, we went into unknown homes that had been damaged by hurricanes. We were blessed that we finished those homes. There were other teams that had been in there previous to us. And this group from your church finished four homes for families. They completed work that had been started by other teams. And it wasn't easy. We wore as much pain as we put on places many times. Many of our youth learned new skills in laying flooring. That was a two and a half day job. Um, we did a lot of cleaning of things. We helped feed the hungry through our host church. We helped our host church prepare for their recovery efforts. Uh, and some of these youth were probably had been away from home for the longest time ever. And certainly it was the first time they all lived together for a week. That could present challenges. We had one hiccup. We resolved it. 
And what excited me was I got a text later or the next day, oh, somebody else is having a problem, but we'll take care of it. This was from the youth. It was an amazing experience. Please watch. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. I have all that I need. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. I have all that I need. He leads me beside peaceful streams. I have all that I need. He leads me beside peaceful streams. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He lets me rest in green meadows. He lets me rest in the green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He leads me beside peaceful streams. I have all that I need. He renews my strength. He renews my strength. He renews my strength. He renews my strength. He guides me along the right path. He guides me along right paths. He guides me along right paths. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. 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 Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Even when I walk through the darkest valley. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. 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 For you are close beside me. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. For you are close beside me. For you are close beside me. I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. For you are close beside me. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You prepare a feast for me in the the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. My cup overflows with blessings. My cup overflows with blessings. I have all that I need. My cup overflows with blessings. My cup overflows with blessings. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. My cup overflows with blessings. All the days of my life. My cup overflows with blessings. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. 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 I will live in the house of the Lord forever. I will live in the house of the Lord forever. I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever.
they hadn't seen this before, so I got a couple dirty looks from some people. Yeah, there's one right there. Uh, the voiceovers were all 12 of the youth, plus one who wanted to go but could, wasn't able to go. The, 23rd, the Psalm 23 is the New Living um, version of it, NLT version of it. And uh, I had first heard that on Joy FM at the start of the pandemic, and they shared it with me. And everybody recorded the entire Psalm 23, and then we took some 90 clips out of it and put them together. And we thought it was appropriate, along with Joe's piece, which was also Lauren Daigle, thank you. We helped these families come out of darkness. We've been in a hurricane here once since I, we've been here, and it wasn't that bad. Um, the church was flooded. As I said, they were doing renovations. Uh, some of these homes who went in were, well, all the homes who were in were people that couldn't afford insurance. And they were small, they were run down, but it's what they had. It's all they had. And uh, in one of the homes, you may have seen it in the picture, but they may talk about it, a couple are gonna speak. Uh, everything was piled up because that's where they had to put it for work to be done on their homes. And so uh, it was close quarters, it was pretty tight. You saw Jordan almost got one in the eye, got right under the eye at one point. Some of our, many of our youth are on vacations. Their family scheduled their vacations around the mission trip, so they can't be here today. Uh, one's in a scout uh, encampment, which they'll get back later tonight. And some others are working in some other things. But these are the youth who came here, but they represent all of them. Eric in the back was with us. Uh, Tim Ringer, who was here before, was with us. And Robert was with us. And I was the other sort of adult, sometimes not. That was always under debate. Um, there's one video I didn't show, but we'll leave that one out there. Anyway, um, they did good work on behalf of the church. The, uh, the food delivery system was amazing, and some of us ended up being there for hours with that process. So uh, a couple of them have volunteered, actually been coerced, but volunteered to speak. And I'll turn the mic over to Aaron right now. Good morning. Uh, I'm volunteering here this morning as I would like to talk about our mission trip. As you can see, we actually made it out alive. It was equal parts traumatizing, but equal parts fun, and we got to learn quite a lot. Um, I would like to acknowledge all that we have done throughout that week, from painting, painting walls, ceilings, to even putting down laminate flooring while watching Dr. Phil. But... <laughs> I like, I'd also like to say how proud I am of this group because we set out, we set out a goal and we were able to accomplish, accomplish it and even more. So I would like to thank you as a church for allowing us to go on this mission trip. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, I'd like to, I pretty much feel the same as Aaron, but one of the things that I definitely enjoyed the most on the trip was being able to talk to some of the families that were there and learn of their experiences through the hurricane and the joy on their faces after we completed their homes. It, it was a feeling that can't really be matched. Um, and that's one thing that I'll be able to live with forever and keep in my mind. Well, the others spoke very eloquently at our devotionals. You saw those on the beach. The devotionals were led by the youth, by the way, not by adults. Uh, Aaron had a team, Cece had a team, Jordan had a team, and they rotated during the week. The beach was just a gorgeous place to have the devotionals. There's a sunset behind us. Um, it was just amazing. And uh, they were amazing, as I said before. So on behalf of me, here I go again, like they heard me breaking up there. Uh, thank you all. Uh, and thank your youth, because they, they served you well. Thank you.
I don't know how to follow what we've just heard. It's, it's like, uh, praise God that we have those children and youth as part of our church family. Uh, and we have, we have watched many of them grow up and become tremendous adults doing wonderful things. And I know this group will do it too. But we have the privilege of watching them right now. So, For those of you who don't know, and there are some out there who don't, my name is Pam Michelle, and I'm the lay leader and church council chair here at St. Paul's. Um, this morning, I got my glasses on. Um, Jane Darling and I are going to share some information uh, that we gathered from the annual conference uh, 2021. And just a little note here for those of you who are not famili familiar with what annual conference is, the United Methodist Church is a connectional church, which means we have a governance structure. And so St. Paul's is a local church. And we are part of the governance structure that connects to our district, which then connects to the conference. And our conference is the majority of Florida, with the exception of the extreme western part of the panhandle. And so we get together once a year to do the business of the conference uh, and, and learn new things and to worship together, which is one of the most glorious things that you can experience. But this year, as with last year, um, it was a virtual conference instead of everybody getting together. But they were able to do something this year that was 
phenomenal from my perspective. Over the year, we've all learned how to handle some of this virtual digital stuff. Some of us haven't learned as well as others, but the conference got pretty good. Uh, and every session that occurred was, was uh, videotaped and posted on the website, including the pre-conference sessions, which are full of information and things that you can do. So I'm not going to go through all of that. It is posted at flumc.org slash AC 2021. And you can go and watch every one of those at your leisure, see how the budget was handled, see how resolutions were handled, see who was being moved and not moved, and praying and hearing the bishop talk. What, what we're going to do this morning is talk about the piece that, that spoke to all of us that participated in that and also to your council. Your council for the last couple of months has been talking about where do we go from here? We've, we've all been through a, a 18 months worth of, of disconnect. Uh, how do we reconnect? I don't think there's any one of us who, if we were honest with ourselves, didn't say we, have, we haven't been changed. We all have been changed to some degree. How we do things, how we talk to people, getting to know one another again. That, that's really part of the process. So, um, so council started that and timing for annual conference this year was absolutely it's God's plan. It, it always is. Um, so we're going to focus on a couple things laity driven. And, and laity is related to the church and as related to our partner as Deborah so strongly reminded us a couple weeks ago, Robert cannot do any this alone when it comes to what are we doing with missions and who are we as a church. So he's our partner, um, one of the many. Um, so the questions are, who are we as laity of the church and where are we being called? And you've heard that repeatedly this morning. Where are we being called? The kids were called by God to go on that mission trip. It took a lot of hands to get it done, but initially it was a call of God to go. Uh, so the question is true for all of us as a congregation. That includes those of us sitting here, those of us who may be out there watching on live stream, the youth that are across, across the way in, in Fellowship Hall, the Children's Education Center. It's all of us. Um, All of this change that we've been going through this year has been scary for some, maybe all of us. Uh, but this time we're in now is a very exciting time. Uh, we need to move forward. We're coming out. We're, it's like, why aren't the doors open, Bobby? I heard you. I heard you. And the side doors will be open next week, guys, just so you know. Uh, yeah, so, so just know it'll happen. Um, but anyway, we need to move forward. So Bishop Carter stated in this way, and I, I just thought this was really good. We have been frozen since the 1950s. Now, this, these are Bishop Carter's words, not mine. Um, and he was referencing what we looked like generally as a United Methodist Church. We call people to this building and say, come to church, and we're going to count you as being present when you're sitting here, and we're going to wear robes, and we're going to sing in a choir loft, and we have an organ or a piano or whatever, and things have changed for some churches, and certainly we have done some different things at St. Paul's. But we have meetings every month. What does that look like? How are we congregating? How, you know, what are we doing that's different? Again, high level, there are certainly some things that are different. But we have been frozen since the 1950s. Um, but COVID has done a, as horrible as it is. I guess you always find some positive in something. It's unfrozen us. For those of you who are familiar with those terms, we couldn't meet in the building. We couldn't put our robes on. We had to figure out different ways of doing things so we could continue to worship, continue to be in contact with one another, and continue to do some of the missions or do them differently than we had been doing or doing those things that had changed slightly. Uh, and I gotta get this other page. And again, Bishop Carter's 
sense was, this is a season for trying new things. It has been and will continue to be. And our question then becomes, what's worth preserving and what's not? The conference has been encouraging us to focus on uh, four areas during this time. And just so you're aware of what those are, first one is congregational vitality. And that's nothing new. We've talked about that for a long time. And it generally ends up in being in terms of numbers, how many people are attending and how many new members and how many have been, been baptized and, and how many uh, have we lost. Um, but again, different perspective because of the change of what we were living through. So it became, okay, how are you worshiping? Well, for a while we were worshiping via video. Would you have ever thought we would have done that? And I do want to say that Pastor Robert and the rest of the staff stood up the week after everything was closed down and said, we are not missing a Sunday. And that next Sunday, we had worship by way of video, live stream on TV. Uh, that's a big thing. Uh, and for those of you who are not aware, and this is part of uh, the clergy care that is another one of these points, in order to accomplish that, it wasn't just you know time sitting down in front of the camera and saying, here it is, here's your sermon, here's the service. It took hours and hours to videotape those pieces and put them all together so that we could at least have some sort of church service while we were at home in front of our computers or TVs. Um, and, and it seemed simple because we were watching it. We were watching that completed piece of it, but it wasn't. Um, other things that happened during congregational vitality was Things happen really fast in terms of how are we going to reach out and touch our congregation. We're accustomed to seeing one another. Uh, so how are we going to make sure everybody's okay? So in, in effect, there was a new uh, ministry developed called Reach Out and Touch. And I know all of you had somebody calling you or you were on the phone calling people every week just to check. Are you okay? Is there anything we can do for you? And now as time went on and things began to open, then that ministry shifted. But during that first crucial period of time, it was part of congregational vitality. Um, talked about clergy care. That was the second one. The third one that, that the conference has had is anti-racism. And some of you may not realize this, but we do have some small group discussions going on and under, in trying to understand what this really means for us as individuals and us as a church. Um, and the fourth one was fill the table. Um, and Elizabeth counts every month, you know, how many people have we fed? That means how many meals did we serve at Interfaith? Um, how many meals did we provide at Open Arms? Uh, a new ministry was developed, and Donna, I'm so glad you're here today, because we, we developed one. Ward Highlands had lost their volunteers that transported the backpacks from Interfaith to the school for those children who took them home for the weekend to be fed. And we were able to pick that up for them. And so there were a number of women who would go to Interfaith every Thursday, pick up the, the bags and transport them to Ward Highlands and deliver them, a very quiet thing. For those of you who aren't aware, those backpacks are filled with food that started with Chuck Ray's desire to do the peanut and butter and jelly ministry. And because of that, uh, we named that ministry of delivering the backpacks uh, Rays of Hope for Chuck and Don. Um, and thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so yeah, it's, yeah, I think so too. We also change some things. You know, we normally bring food up for interfaith, collect it, bring it up, developed a drive-through. It did two things. One of a part of it was congregational care. We were allowed, we were able then to see, uh, people who were not comfortable coming to the outside worship service or the inside worship service, but they were comfortable coming by and dropping off food. So not only we were, were we continuing our ministry of collecting food and other things for different missions that are out there, but we were also supporting that piece of the congregation that was not comfortable congregating during that period of time. Um, I'd get the bottom line to all of that is that was all quick, 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 quick. Let's do it. Let's get it done. We have something we need to do. People stepped up and volunteered as they felt led. And, and it tells me that we can do whatever God is leading us to do. So it's time for us now to focus on where we're going. Um, and you heard it 
you heard it repeatedly, as Deborah spoke to us this morning, as the kids spoke to us this morning. Where are we going? What are we being called to do as a congregation? Uh, and as we move forward in making disciples throughout the world. Um, and, and Bishop Carter had one other quote that just really stuck to, to me. He asked, as he was talking about these issues, what is, what if God is out there, out there saying, come play with me? Just keep that in front thought. That moves us. Now I've talked about a couple things. I've gone from annual conference to the church. It's because annual conference was about the church. Uh, the, almost every piece that we talked about, wh whatever the focus was, talked about the church. The bigger church as well as local churches because we're not the only ones that went through some of these struggles. So, so it was a very much part of it and certainly then fed uh, our need to move forward. It is time to step out. None of us know what it's going to look like three months from now, six months from now, or even 12 months from now. We don't. Things could change. But we need to step forward and start moving. And so during the laity session, there was a tremendous presentation um, that, that the conference laity prepared and, and shared with us. Uh, the bishop was involved in it, and, and it's a well, to me, it's very exciting because it's a tool that each one of us can use as we're moving forward. And from, from your council's perspective, no, there's more to come about where we're going with this. But what Jane will be presenting in her presentation will be used as we move forward as St. Paul's in terms of discerning where God wants to take us. So with that, okay. Good morning. Okay, this is something from the Wayback Machine that you all, I think, probably learned as kids, okay? Here is the church, here is the steeple, open the doors and see all the people, people. That's what the church is. And the laity is just a fancy church term for the people. And that's us. As Deb said this morning, it's just us. So Pam talked about becoming unfrozen. And that's kind of what, what's happening right now as we come out of the pandemic. It's presented us with an opportunity to look at ourselves and to become something new. And I know that I personally have spent a lot of time reflecting in this period of isolation and found myself really questioning quite a lot and sitting even virtually through the laity session I came out of that just so excited because suddenly I had found a purpose I knew I of my presence I'm looking for partners and I am passionate. Those are the four P's that we were presented at the laity session. So let's take a look at them. The purpose. What is our purpose as laity, as a group, or as individuals? Why are we here? Um, we know that God speaks to all of us. Sometimes God talks to us in the middle of the night. Sometimes God hits us upside the head. Sometimes God's hiding in the bushes saying, hey, psst, come here. Um, it's the laity that actually drives what happens in the church. And it's the laity that does God's work in the world. And it's the laity that is essential for a vital, thriving church. So our next P is presence. So what does that mean, presence? Does that mean being here in the building? Sometimes yes. Does that mean being at home, watching us here in the building? Sure, absolutely. But presence really means, I mean, how much time are we here in the building? An hour, an hour and a half, some of us two hours, if we're practicing, doing whatever out of how many hours in a week. So where do we really have to be present? We're out in the world 
doing God's work as the laity. And we figure out what we're doing by examining our purpose, which is to go out and do the work. And at the end of the day, the world can be more kind, more compassionate, and a more loving place because of our presence in it. But when we go out to do this work, if we're all running around doing individual things and we're doing something that somebody else is doing, what should we be doing? We should be looking for partners because we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Sometimes we just need to be the cog that helps the gears turn. And one of the ways that we do that is we find partners. So obviously we partner with Robert, our pastor. We partner actually first and foremost with God and then we reach out to our community. So we're else, we're love, and we are partners in our community. Um, interfaith is actually a really fine example of a partnership. We provide meals for them at least once a month. We collect food for them. We collect school supplies. We do all sorts of things to support that piece of the community that does work that we're not actually able to do we are supporting their work, and that's really, truly important. So that leads to the last and most important of the four Ps, I think. It's our passion. As people of faith, we have the power to dream of a world as it ought to be. And we actually have the power as a group of laity with a purpose, with a presence and with partnership. We have that power to make that world actually happen. What did our youth just finish doing? They made somebody's lives better. They rebuilt homes. And in the process of rebuilding homes, they rebuilt hearts. And that's really critical. That is what the, need, the world needs right now. That's what we need here at St. Paul's. It's what we need in Ocala. It's what we need in the larger place, is rebuilt hearts. And that's what the passion is, is rebuilding hearts. So where does that leave us? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you will lead me. I will hold your people in my heart.
one another today. I heard you singing, here I am, Lord. You heard me singing the same thing. God is our witness above that we've promised that we will do what he asks us to do. And so now we pray for God's blessing as we go from this place that what we have spoken with our lips might happen in our lives. And we pray that the God who created us, that Jesus Christ who redeemed us, that the Holy Spirit that daily strengthens us, will help us be who God sees we can be, will help turn our words into living action. Amen. Let it shine, let it shine. 
it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine.